The first thing we should do when beginning to read a passage of scripture is to ask the question, what was the original intent of the author? What was the meaning of what was being written? To whom was the author writing and what was the message? Besides the context of what we are reading, we should try to understand the type of writing or the genre of the particular book of the Bible that we are reading. I have often compared the Bible to a modern newspaper, saying that everything you find in a newspaper you can find in the Bible. Headlines, advice columns, weather reports, obituaries. When I say this, inevitably someone says, but there's, there are no comic strips in the Bible. Oh yes, there's one, the book of Jonah. It's one giant comic strip, it just hasn't been illustrated yet. The whole book is tweaking the nose of the Israelites who want their enemies, the Ninevites, demolished by God. But instead, after just one day of preaching by the reluctant Jonah, they all convert, every man, woman, and child, and they even go so far as to put sackcloth on their cattle. Now, I've said all this as an introduction to the problem that we face in today's gospel passage. It is the last of three parables that Matthew records Jesus preaching just before his passion and death. All three parables deal with the end of time or the parousia, and they all call us to be ready. The problem that the parables present is that when reading them, we have a tendency to allegorize them or apply different meanings to different aspects of the parable, whereas scripture commentators tell us that every parable has just one overarching message. Today's parable is especially challenging. The very wealthy man preparing to go on a journey and entrusting his possessions to his servants is not a figure for God. And we can see that clearly by his vindictive behavior when he returns and finds the third servant did not invest his money. This parable is not an exhortation for people to use their God-given talents to the full, which might be the way we would first be inclined to read it. An important key to understanding this parable is to remember that Jesus did not live in a capitalist system in which it is thought that wealth can be increased by investment. Instead, people at that time believed that there was limited good, there was only so much wealth, and any increase to one person takes away from another. One who amassed large amounts of money for himself would be seen as greedy or wicked, and in the third parable, the thir and in the parable, the third servant is the honorable one. Only he refused to cooperate in the corrupt system by which his master continues to accrue huge amounts of money while others go wanting. The Benedictine monk Eugene Hensel writes that this parable and the message it contains are not easy for many contemporary Western people to hear. We do not believe that wealth is a limited good. We are committed to a system of capitalism that encourage us to compete and believe that with hard work, we can achieve unlimited wealth. On the other hand, Christians share their wealth and their goods because they know these gifts are on loan. They are only on loan from God. Contrary to what other things, Christians believe that they receive most by giving more. And that is the background for the rest of this homily on Stewardship Sunday. As we come to the end of the church year, it is our custom here at St. Joseph University Parish for me to give you our annual report for the last year. Actually, we didn't do it last year because it was at this time last year that I was hospitalized with Guillain-Barre syndrome and was out of commission for about five months. But I'm back now and about 98% recovered, so I want to catch you up on how we are doing and how we navigated this past challenging year. Now, if I look closely, I think I can see some of your eyes glazing over already. And if you're not a member of this parish, perhaps you're thinking, I really don't want to listen to all this. But I would invite you to reconsider because I want, you to tell, I want to tell you what is the story of our parish community. St. Joseph University Parish is a marvelous faith community that is diverse and spirit-filled. I think our mission statement says it best. St. Joseph University Parish is a diverse, progressive, spirit-filled Christian community where all, that's all capitalized, bold, and underlined, all are welcome to deepen their experience of faith, join in vibrant worship, share their talents, and live justly. Extensive studies have shown that Catholics choose a parish based primarily on three criteria. 
the quality of the preaching, the quality of music, and an environment of hospitality. We here have committed ourselves to these ideals while adding a fourth dimension to our identity, a commitment to social justice from the local to the global level. Our parish elementary school, the oldest in the diocese operating since 1850, provides quality education for children from diverse faiths, ethnicities, and socioeconomic backgrounds. And our campus ministry program reaches students from across the globe here at the South Campus and at the Medical School of the State University of New York at Buffalo. One of the blessings of this past year has been knowing that we have been able to count on and sustain our mission because of your commitment. One of the strongest ways this happens is through our Commitment to Parish Life program, which involves a commitment to our community through your prayer, participation in our ministries, and your financial support. Your generosity provided us with a steady stream of income through the difficult months of our COVID shutdown and our gradual reopening. And we hope we can count on your continued support as we face the growing challenges ahead. The challenges are many, including the fact that our insurance premiums have increased, our diocesan assessment has increased, and the diocesan subsidies to our parish school and campus ministry program have been eliminated. These reductions will require us to use our savings as we move through the 2021 fiscal year. This is a harsh reality that we are all facing in our personal lives, here at St. Joseph University Parish, and in whatever parish community you might belong to. But we know that we do not face these challenges alone. As it says in my favorite psalm, and it's my favorite not just because it talks about the God of Jacob, but Psalm 46 guarantees us that no matter what happens, quote, God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in trouble, Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give away and mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and mountains quake with their surging. For there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is with her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. The Lord God Almighty is with us, the God of Jacob is our fortress. Thanks to all of you for being such generous stewards of God's gracious gifts. Thank you for all you are and all you do to make the mission of St. Joseph University Parish possible and to help our community not only survive, but thrive. <laughs>